I did a thing. I did, here's the thing, we did a thing. Now we're gonna do a thing with the thing. I'm gonna paint a graffiti design on this hoodie and I'm gonna walk you through the process that I'm gonna use to do it. So first, I'm gonna explain the design here. It's a, it's a graffiti design, big old bubbly blocky letters with a brick wall. Um, we're on a hoodie, which doesn't really change the artwork much, but it does put a little more pressure on you as an artist to make sure you get it right. So we're writing the word basic in a graffiti style. So the first thing I'm gonna do is space out my letters. I explain this every single time. And here it goes again. I'm gonna write style, uh, a simple, stylistic, ghosted in version of all my letters. And this is gonna help me to figure out the density of the strokes in certain areas. I got a, a nice open area here, so I can either make the, the, the strokes bigger here, or I can cram some more stuff in here and take a more dense area like this and stretch it out. Um, basically what I wanna do here is make sure that I, each letter has enough room to be legible. And now I'm going to take the basic strokes and I'm gonna expand on them in a way that I think is A, legible and B, interesting. So each, each stroke that I'm doing here, I'm gonna try to do this slowly. There's a, there's a line on this B here. So I'm gonna turn this single line into a block. And this line here, I'm gonna turn into a three-dimensional, I guess a two-dimensional shape. And I'm gonna do this the whole way. Here we have this A, there's a stroke here that's overlapping this B. I wanna make sure that both B and A are legible. And I wanna pick which parts of which letters are gonna overlap each other so that it maintains that legibility, but also is stylistic. Your holes in your letters, like this A here has a hole in the middle, those are important aspects of your letter that define what that letter is. Those should always be legible or visible. You should never cover them up. This B should not cover up the hole in that A or it's gonna kinda hide what this letter is. So I, I'm gonna choose and put this A on top of the B instead of the B on top of the A. I'm sure that, that should make some sense. I'm gonna carry on and continue. Now that I have the basic, <laughs> the basic <laughs> outline of the letters, I'm gonna pick a couple areas and ways that I can exaggerate some places to maintain its legibility still, but also add more style. Like this C, I could add a serif to the top of this C. So I'm gonna do that here. All right, it's still a C, it's still obviously a C, but it adds a little bit of style. It helps increase the symmetry. You can see that there's something high over here, like there's something high over here. There's this curve here that matches the curve on the B. You wanna make sure that your letter, your design shape as a whole is also interesting, not just your individual letters. All right. Gonna keep on playing with them for a second until I get them happy. Get, get them where I'm happy with them. That's good enough. And uh, this design also has like a graffiti style underline to it. Something like that. Then I'm gonna do the same thing as I did with the letters. I'm gonna ghost in a simple shape. And then I'm going to fill it out into a bigger, fully realized shape. Something like that. And that's fine. And now that I've gotten my, my first lines done, I guess they're not technically first lines, but I'm gonna call them first lines. I'm gonna go ahead and do the black now. My black is empty, I have to fill it up. About 10% reducer or so. It's not an exact science. Help me cam. and we're gonna go in with our black outlines. Now, where these letters intersect with each other, it's important to plan, like we did with this A and this B, this A is on top of the B. Um, we, we have to plan what letters are going on top of each other and therefore what strokes need to be painted first. Um, you can either paint the A first or you can just paint the B first and know where you're gonna stop and where you're gonna run into things. I'm gonna paint left to right mostly, but sometimes go back and figure out where things need to be changed. And 
when you're doing your black or you're doing your, your main color outline, this is where you can add a little bit more detail and flair to it. Like right here. Just adding an extra little something across these letters. Got my first black outlines done I'm gonna add a drop shadow in this case I'm not gonna do a whole lot of 3d effects like you would see in a lot of graffiti I'm just going to add some line weight to the bottom of my letters so anything that's pointing down or at the bottom of the letters is going to have just a thicker black stroke at the bottom this is the simplest form of a shadow if you will it can be added on quickly it doesn't you have to, don't have to add a lot of thought to it you can just knock it out real fast. It doesn't matter where you start. And typically, if my letter is overlapping a different letter, then I don't add the drop shadow there. I only add it where it would intersect with just white space. See this S drop shadow underneath, but I don't go over this stroke at the bottom, and I don't go over this A. And that's my choice. The reason I do that, the reason I avoid shadowing over top of the other letters usually, Sometimes I'll stride the stroke, stroke because it's, it's just a stroke, it's not a letter. It's because shadowing over other letters oftentimes will make it hard to read those letters. If you cover up an important part of that letter, like I mentioned on the whole of this A, then you're gonna make it more difficult to read what that letter is. So it's up to you. It's case by case basis. You can kind of judge what it would look like if you did shadow it and see if you can get away with it without ruining the legibility. I've said it many times before, in, in the airbrush world, you're not just making cool designs for yourself, you are making designs for a client typically. And it doesn't matter how awesome your letters look, if your customer can't read them, they're typically not going to be happy with them. Um, but you might just be making artwork for yourself and then you, you're the graffiti artist and you do whatever you want to. So I've added my drop shadow to the bottom of all the letters. I'm happy with the overall design. I think it's legible. I think it's clean and neat. Now I'm going to work on some of the background and fills that go on with it. In this design, I have a brick wall pattern at the top and the bottom. I use a stencil for that, so I'm going to grab that. We're using the colors purple and blue for this design. I'm going to go ahead and use blue for the background, mostly because I've used purple for the most of the inside of the letters. So I'm just going to add my stencil here. Um, this is probably going to vary based on your preference and your designs and whatever you're doing. Um, but I can show you some techniques about stencils themselves. I'm going to use, I'm going to purposely make a little bit of overspray from the stencil at the bottom here. And I'm going to explain why. There's actually two reasons why I'm going to do that. One is because I want to show you how to fix it. And two is I'm going to show you a different technique and that's how to use it so you don't have to worry so much about it existing. Overspray is something. Overspray, let me define overspray first. If I was filling in these letters, if you can see that purple on the outside, I would consider that overspray. It's, it's paint that's outside of where it's supposed to be, something that would need to be covered up or fixed, um, typically. I'm gonna show you a couple different ways that either you can use overspray to your advantage, or easy ways to cover up that overspray so you don't have to worry about it so much in the future. 
So I'm gonna make an intentional mistake over there so that we can see how we can fix it. And then later I'll show you how to, to do it. See this, this stencil, when I had it up here, I painted on the side and overspray got off of the stencil over to the edge. And in this case, that would be a bad thing and it would look really bad. But this design has some drips on it that I added there intentionally. And the reason for that is because now I can do something like a drip effect that covers up my overspray. You'll never know that I made a mistake here because I put a drip strategically right there on the design. Another reason that you would use overspray, um, it's hard to explain in this example because it doesn't quite apply in this scenario, but I'm gonna make it work anyway. First I'm gonna finish my outline. Reason I can, oh, a way I could use overspray to my advantage is imagine I was filling in these letters and some extra paint got on the sides over here like this and there was just too much blue everywhere else. I can either be real careful to avoid that extra blue ever showing up or I can just paint quickly knowing that later I'm gonna come back with a different color like white and actually use that overspray to add to my design. If I add this white outline to the outside of the stroke, kind of cutting off that overspray, now all of a sudden it looks pretty interesting and looks intentional. It makes the design pop out. I'm gonna do that here on the top as well. Now, I'm gonna fill in my letters mostly with purple here. Darken the bottoms with some darker purple. And now I'm going to use white to add some highlights. That's it, that's the whole design. I am gonna add a couple more blue drips because I think it could use something here in the middle. I do love some drips. You can go ahead and kind of like do a wobbly line and then thicken it up. And there it is. Um, we're pretty much done with this design. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something from this very quick video and I hope that this camera mount works out really well. I look forward to talking to you guys soon and I will see you guys later. Bye. -bye.